Hey, what's going on? Thank you for coming to my channel. My name is Wally, and you are now tuned into Playboy Hustlers TV. Hey, look, this is the continuation. As we all know, nobody made it. May they rest in peace. Right now, we're going to dive into James Cameron reacting to the sub implosion. All right, so let me stop wasting your time. Let's go ahead and press play over here. You dig? Speaking of James Cameron, another person closely familiar with the Titanic is the director, James Cameron himself, uh, along with his Oscar winning movie. Um, Mr. Cameron, I understand you've made a number of dives to the wreckage site, too. Just give us your sense on what you're feeling right now looking at these images of the shipwreck that you studied so closely and now hearing that another tragedy has been tied to the same area well i've been down there many times and i know the wreck site very well as as does my friend uh, bob ballard i've been made 33 dives i actually calculated that i've spent more time on the ship than the captain did back in the day um and of course uh, you know, as a submersible designer myself, I designed and built a sub to go to the deepest place in the ocean, three times deeper than Titanic. So I understand the, the engineering problems associated with, with building this type of type of vehicle. And well, it seems like people underestimated what it could do, right? At this point, that's what it looked like. All the safety protocols that you have to go through. And uh, I think the, that what Bob said because I was watching, uh, is absolutely critical for people to to really get the, the, the take home message from this, from, from our effort here, is s deep submergence diving is a mature art. From the early 60s where there were, you know, a few accidents, nobody was killed in the, in the deep submergence until now is more time than between Kitty Hawk and the, and the, the flight of the first 747. So if we haven't improved over that period of time, and you know we, we have improved drastically over that period of time, and uh, the the uh, certification protocols that all other deep submergence vehicles, except this one, that carry passengers, especially paying. Yo, I don't know what would possess anybody to want to even go down there. I don't see how that's even an excursion, how that's even a thing, you know, like, why would you want to go see a ship? Why would you want to see a ship that sunk and is all rotten, all from a catastrophic event back in the days, right? Which means there's a lot of people died. I'm sure they never recovered all the bodies from there. You understand me? So why would you want to do that? Why are you going out there for it? You know, this shouldn't even be allowed, if you ask me passengers all over the world in tropical waters uh, deep coral reefs other wreck sites and so on um, the the safety record is is the gold standard absolutely not only no fatalities but no major incidents requiring all of these assets to converge to a site of course that's the nightmare that we've all lived with you know since uh, since all of us entered this this uh, this field of deep exploration we and then another thing, I don't, you know, sorry to cut it off so soon, but let's let's think about this, right? I'm sure everyone on that sub, right, or everyone in that sub had families, right? So check this out now. Life insurance. They signed something saying that if things don't go right, they're fine with it. So let's think about that right there now. Hmm. Food for thought. Live with it in the back of our minds. But because implosion, as Bob described it, such a violent event, um, is first and foremost in our minds, the pressure boundary, which is what they call the, the hull of the sub that the people go inside, is obviously first and foremost in our minds as engineers. And we spend so much time and energy on that. And we use all the computerized tools available today, finite element analysis. Uh, we worked on our sphere for our for our deep deep vehicle that went to the Challenger Deep for over three years just in the computer before we even made the thing and then of course we we pressure tested it over and over and over uh, and so on so you know this is a mature art and many people in the community were very concerned about this sub and a number of of uh, you know of the top players in the in the uh, deep submergence engineering community even wrote letters to the company 
saying that what they were doing was too experimental to carry passengers and that needed to be certified and and so on. So I'm I'm struck by the similarity of the Titanic disaster itself, where the captain was repeatedly warned about ice ahead of his ship, and yet he steamed at full speed into an ice field on a moonless night, and many people died as a result. And for a very similar tragedy where warnings went unheeded to take place at the same exact site, with all the diving that's going on all around the world, uh, I, th I think it's just astonishing. It's really quite surreal. And of course, P.H. Nargile, uh, the French legendary. I mean, look at that little, look at that thing. I don't even see why you would pay so much money to jump into something like that where you only could see forward. I would want to see all around. You understand what I mean? So this is senseless, it's pointless, and, you know, poor decisions, man. Rich people, poor decisions. Submersible dive uh, pilot, a friend of mine. You know, it's a very small community. I've known PH for 25 years. Uh, for him to have died tragically in this way is is almost impossible for me to process. It is certainly haunting to consider that comparison to the Titanic and, and what happened to the five people on board this uh, submersible vehicle. James, I want to ask you, though, since, since you've been down on these dive missions before, um, we talked about the safety risks. We've reported on the fact that the people on board signed waivers. They, they knew that this was dangerous hmm. and that there weren't very many other vehicles that could come get them out if something goes wrong. Um, how this is crazy right here. All of them gone to see what? I have no clue. My father could not drag me to see anything like that. You ask anybody from the hood, yo, look, we're gonna go dive deep to go see the Titanic. They're gonna say, what? For what? Understand, some things it's just common sense is not common anymore, it look like. How aware were you of those concerns and those risks before you went down? And is, is there anything that should be done um, when it comes to safety in the future? Look, it, it's, it's comparing apples and oranges here. I went with a very proven system uh, when I dove at Titanic with the Russian submersibles. They, had, they, were, they used very, very well understood uh, uh, design methodologies, and they had an excellent operating record when I, when I dove with them, and they continued to have an excellent operating record, uh, flawless operating record throughout their, their entire career. They're, I think they're now retired. Uh, but I always had great confidence. Now, the, having said that, I always had confidence in the sub. The Titanic wreck site is a very hostile place. It's a dangerous site to dive. If you think of a typical research dive, you go down and you're really just operating over a bottom. You may be looking for organisms. You may be looking at geology. Hydrothermal vent sites can be, can be a bit dangerous as well. But Titanic, you've got you know this eight-story, ten-story high structure with overhanging uh, metal uh, structures. It, it's a twisted mess. You can get entangled. And entanglement mm. was always a concern of ours, but we dove with a two-sub system. We always felt confident that if one of the subs got ensnared, uh, you'd still have communication, you'd still have life support, you'd still have power, you'd have another sub there that could help you manage the problem. We always felt that, that uh, we, were, we were on pretty safe ground. This sub had no backup. It didn't have a lot of backup systems from what I understand, and it was predicated on, on what I think of as a fundamentally flawed uh, design principle, which is a carbon fiber hull. If you ask me, listen, whatever's down there, leave it there. That's where it belongs. You understand? What we need is already here for us. You hear me? I don't think things are going to be hidden. I don't see why people love to look for hidden things, you know? When things are here for you, right for you, there's great things for you out here. You get me? Which, when I first heard about a move toward uh, composite hulls, and this was many years ago, even when I was designing my sub, uh, there was another sub that was in sort of in competition with us to get to the Challenger Deep that was operated by uh, a guy named Chris Welsh uh, for, for Richard Branson. And they had a composite hull, and I told those guys, I said, I said somebody's going to get killed in that sub or in a sub like it. And the DNA of the Ocean Gate sub was in that sub at the time, you know, two hemispherical end caps, and a carbon fiber cylinder in the center. And I never believed 
in that because the way it fails is it delaminates because it's you have to have a hull, a pressure hull made out of made out of a, a, a contiguous material like steel um, or like titanium, you know, which is the proven standard, or, or like acrylic, you know. I'm an, I'm um, um, you know I have a small equity stake in a in I think one of the best submersible companies in the world, uh, Triton Submersibles, and they use acrylic for their hulls. But it, once again, it's a contiguous material, so you can do computer modeling to see how it'll behave. But you know, this Ocean Gate sub had sensors on the inside of the hull to give them a warning when it was starting to crack. And what? I think if that's your idea of safety, that is crazy. Giving you a warning when it's about to start to crack. Nah, I'm sorry. Do you really think that these people knew? Do you really think they knew the conditions of how they built this? I really doubt it. I think if they knew all this, that they would have never gone on it. I think they were persuaded into saying, hey, look, man, you know, you're good. Look at all these other rich people that did it. They're fine. They're living. You get me? I think they got swindled. If you ask me, they got swindled. It's easy to swindle people sometimes, especially ones with a lot of money. They don't think. They don't think. I'm telling you. Then you're doing it wrong. You don't. You know, and and they probably had warning that their hull was starting to delaminate and, to and your, starting to crack. Because to, as as Bob pointed out, it's our belief we understand from inside the community that they had dropped their ascent weights and they were coming up trying to manage an emergency. And to your point, a warning only goes so far when you have the ability um, to get back to the surface, or there's a backup vehicle there to come help you out of a bad situation. Yo, that's crazy. Listen, man. Hey, rest in peace to all of those lives lost, and my condolences to all the family members, you hear me? Listen, that decision was too poor. Rich minds, poor thinking, not great. They don't combine, all right? With that being said, hey, make sure you hit that like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Definitely make sure you hit that notification bell. Another thing, yeah, make sure you go check out the links in my description, all right? I got my Patreon account on there, and I also got buy me a coffee, baby, you know? Let me get a sip, baby. See you in the next one. Love.